couple of months ago, I did a review of the EcoFlow Delta Max product. Now, if you haven't watched that video, maybe you, you might want to look at that one first and just sort of hear what I said about it, because what I want to do today is just revisit some of those points. I still think this is a fantastic product. I, I said nothing else in the review, apart from the few bad points that I listed. I did say it is a great product, and I absolutely stand by that. I still use it every day, and it's so capable. As far as power delivery is concerned, this thing is amazing, and I'm sure the second generation of the EcoFlow products, which is now available, is, they're just equally as good and maybe better in some regards. Looking at the noise side of things, one person commented and said, well, you haven't really been fair in the way you demonstrated the noise because there's no real reference for it. You know, you're not saying it's this number of decibels at one meter. And that wasn't my intention, really. It was just to give you an idea of how these things sound. And I think sometimes a few people took the joke that I made in the video around kind of it sounding as loud as a plane. <laughs> Literally, because obviously I don't think that this thing sounds as loud as a plane. It doesn't. In reality, if you're sat in a room and it's a busy room, you're not going to notice the thing. If you're sat in a quiet room, you 100% will notice the thing. And it is pretty loud. I don't, I'm not going to, I haven't got the acoustic measuring equipment to be able to give you accurate measurements on that. But it sounds like the clip that I had in the video. And Probably volume-wise is like a dehumidifier or an air conditioner or something like that. You know, the EcoFlow don't seem to have done a good job of making the cooling method a quiet one because you can cool things in a really, really quiet way. You'd probably have to make the whole casing bigger. You'd have to make the fans bigger so they could flow at a so they could spin at a slower rate to get the equal amount of airflow and that sort of thing. But I don't know. I just feel that. It's louder than it needs to be compared to products of a similar type. But in reality, any product like this is going to make noise, right? You're not going to get a silent version of a product that has this kind of power rating and output mains capacity. All right, secondly, customer service. It's just, in my experience, I completely stand by what I said. That the customer service is rubbish. I did get a reply to the question I posed to them. I put, I put a, sent a couple of questions in, and I got a reply like two months later or something. This came back and I said, "Oh, sorry about the wait." Yeah, two what a month and a half, two months later. Y your customer service leaves a lot to be desired. The responses are stock responses that are semi-accurate at best. I have heard that people have had issues with the product and haven't had too much trouble returning them. They have had replacements sent to them uh, under, with, with, you know, at EcoFlow's cost. Uh, that's good, I suppose. But overall, the customer service experience is a little, is a little poo. It's just not particularly, you know, it doesn't feel like you're really talking to a person about and it doesn't feel like they really understand your problem with the device. They don't, they're just giving you stock answers based on a script, really. What's new? That sort of problem exists in way too many industries today. All right, the calibration side of things, the battery calibration. It's garbage. I mean, I'll be running sort of lower power devices and I've had it set on 1% and it run for over a day. That's a bit more than the example that I gave in the previous video. It's, it's just be, it's just run and run and run. However, what I will add to this now is that you can get it to redo that calibration live from what I can tell. Someone mentioned on a forum about some, you have to you press the button down for 10 seconds. So my, let's say my battery was at like 30% or something. You turn the power, uh, power off on the device. So you do that by pressing the main power button, holding it in for a second and it says off on the display. To do that, you have to have everything else turned off and the solar panel disconnected. And then you press and hold the power button for about 10, 15 seconds. And while you're doing that, you'll see the number of hours sort of change and it reassesses what it thinks is left in the sort of massive batch of cells in there. I don't know whether it looks across at all the voltages of the different cells and rebalances itself or recalibrates itself in some crude way. Now, they still suggest that you do a full calibration by completely discharging the device, recharging the device, to completely discharge and recharge. I don't know how many times you're supposed to do that. Seems absolutely mad to have to do that all the time. But you can then get it to give you a more accurate percentage, either up or down, but it will change. 
Okay, so the solar charge, I was talking about minimum charge that you can actually do on solar, and I was sort of annoyed at the fact that even on a really dull day, it'd be nice if you could just, I don't know, just pull in 10 watts of charge or, or whatever, because that's enough to power my like work laptop when I'm working from home. And you can't do that. And that's true, you can't do that. The minimum amount of charge you can do uh, via solar on this device is 20 watts. You have to be pulling 20 watts via solar for the, for the device to actually switch and go into charge mode. However, I have noticed, and I've never really noticed it on my Delta Max, but I have noticed it on the Mini, that it will still use solar power if it's available below that. Let's see if I can demonstrate what I mean. Right now, this is showing 99 hours remaining. I've got solar plugged into this, but it is a t only a tiny amount of solar coming in. So we've got no charge, we've got no input even registered on here, and the device is not charging. If I enable the mains inverter on the back and take some sort of, uh, basically there's some sort of drain, parasitic drain then in the device, because the mains inverter, even if it's not doing anything, uses some power. We can now see here, We've got 24 watts being used, and this has dropped to 56 hours, something like that, 53 hours, 50. See, it's adjusting all the time. If I pull the solar out of the back now, you immediately see that drops right down to 23 hours. So effectively, the device is using the solar power, even though it's not registering at all on the display. I talked about not being able to leave the solar panels connected. And you can, you can. I mean, the, the configuration I was testing at the time, the way I had my panel set up, whenever night came out, came by and, the, and there was no power coming in, the relay would just sit there and it'd be clicking between one mode and another and then going back and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. I don't know whether it's the way I had them wired in parallel at the time, the type of panels I was using. I, I don't know what was causing that, but I'm now just using four Renogy 175 watt panels. They're just raw solar panels. There's no controller built on them at all for anything. And that just feeds directly into the back of the device. They're all in series and it does work fine. Yes, you can leave the panels connected and yes, the device can turn off However, they were saying, oh, you shouldn't because then the voltage will drop below a certain amount on the cells if the voltage is already low on the cells because the solar panels being connected means the device will always be on. And that's not true. What is true is if, you, if say, you had a really, really low rate on your battery and you had the solar panels connected and, I don't know, you were drawing 30 watts, but the solar panels were only providing 10 watts, that 10 watts from the solar panel would be enough to keep the device powered on. And in that instance, you'd be drawing 30 watts and powering up, uh, powering the device with 10 watts, it wouldn't turn off and you could end up with a, an excessively low voltage state on the batteries. Do you see the difference between the two? One is, yes, you can be using the device, but there is no power coming in on the solar. That's what I was talking about in the last video, no power, so it's completely dark. But if you do have a bit of power, but it's, any power at all coming in on solar will keep the device powered on. And that's the problem that EcoFlow were talking about and that I referred to in the previous video. The final one around battery cost. Well, I do think that the external extra batteries on these things are really expensive. For what they are, they're really, really expensive because they just, they just bump up the capacity on these devices and you could probably get something like a Blue Eti device or whatever for the same money, you could get as good a capacity battery, maybe even slightly better, plus you'll have all the extras, like you'll have more USB outs, you'll have more mains outs. However, I do actually own an external battery for the uh, Delta Max now and as far as kilowatt hour rates go, it's fairly com competitive. I, I was looking at kind of other batteries, so for the equiv equivalent amount of power, I suppose it is fairly competitive. And I can't complain too much on the price. And the way the two batteries work together is pretty clever. It is sensible. And the way this one charges the other one up and, and vice versa, it is nice to have the two together because you don't have to think about anything. The two just sort of sit there. I mean, in my case, the two of them just sit on top of each other here. Uh, it's just like having a PC down on the floor again. I got rid of my PC and moved to this laptop, which just takes up a minimal, minimum amount of space, but I've now got two batteries sat on the floor instead. 
so yeah, they do work nicely together. It is a nice solution. They've made it. They've made it nice. I mean, the, the cables that connect them are super expensive, but they are good quality. I mean, they're really, really thick cables that can carry carry a phenomenal amount of power. So, yes, I think they're overpriced for what they are. But as far as going rates of power is concerned, they're not too bad. So I'll let you off on that one, EcoFlow. So there we go, six points that I raised on my last video. And I just wanted, as I say, to add a bit more information around them. And hopefully you've learned something from that. Hopefully it was useful. And I apologize if I sort of made any mistakes or didn't have enough information at the time on my last video. But that's what you get with experience from using a product. Hopefully it was useful for you. And that's all I had for you today. See you later.